Boris Cherney, the creator of Claude Code at Anthropic, recently came out with a video that I wanted to show you guys a clip of that may bring some reassurance to those who might be afraid that AI is going to replace all developers. I hear that a lot. I think there's a lot of fear out there, but I kind of think it's unwarranted. Now, if there was anybody on the forefront of agentic AI coding, it would be Claude Code, Boris uh, I think his name's Cherny, Boris Cherny. He would be the one that would know about it because that's kind of what they're trying to do. You can just turn Claude code on for seven hours, tell it to build something, and then just come back seven hours later and see what it built. He even doesn't agree that developers are going to disappear. And uh, even us at fingochat.ai, we're building tools that me personally, I'm able to finish... 20 times more than I could before fingochat.ai because it has context engineering built into it, which you can go check out at fingochat.ai. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the video clip that I was talking about. And I'll talk a little bit about why I don't think we should be so afraid of AI replacing developers anytime soon. So I'm using Claude code or whatever form of it in six to 12 months. What does my work actually look like? Am I reviewing PRs all day or what what is it day to day breakdown to? Yeah, I think there's gonna be a mix of more hands-on coding. I, I don't think that's going away. Yeah. And maybe it'll look different though. So maybe hands-on coding today is directly manipulating text, but in the future it might be using quad to man manipulate the text for you. Okay. And then I think there's gonna be this other bucket of maybe less direct coding where Claude proactively does something. And maybe Claude even reviewed it. And it's your job to decide if this is a change that you want or not. Mm. What's your advice for folks out there that are looking to prepare themselves and adapt to this world about what they should be learning or what skills they should be developing? I think more and more it's going to be about the thing you make and not about the process of making it as much. Mm. And I think, I think my advice for people learning to code today is you still have to learn the craft. So you still have to learn a code learn languages, learn compilers, run times, how to build web apps, how to build programs, uh, system design. You still have to know all the stuff. But also just start to get more creative. Right. Um, and you know, if you have an idea for a startup or an idea for a product, you can just build it now right. in a way that you just couldn't before. And we don't really understand what this means, but there's just so much potential that's about to be unlocked because of it. Yeah. It looks like he's saying developers aren't going anywhere. You should still learn how to code. You should still learn systems. And there was one other part that I thought was really interesting. It was when they asked him a question about uh, the future, what you should be doing right now if you're going to be a developer and how would you use these tools. One of the big parts is he really emphasizes that AI is not going to be able to do everything for developers into the future. There's still going to be some things where developers are going to have to write the code themselves. I want to ask you, as a creator of Cloud Code, what are your best practices for using Cloud Code and any tips or tricks? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I recommend, OK, maybe two, maybe two tricks. Yeah. So one thing I recommend is that if you're brand new to Cloud Code and you haven't used it before, don't use it to write code. Mm. And Instead, oh, I know it's a, I know it sounds yeah, crazy. Explain, know, explain. But you got to stop yourself. Like, don't use it to write code yet. The thing to start with is use it to ask questions about the code base. Mm. So you can ask, you know, if I want to make, if I want to add a new logger, how do I do that? And then ask ask Cloud Code to explore the code base and figure it out for you. Or why is this function designed the way that it is? Cloud Code can uh, go in and it can look through Git history and it can answer the stuff for you. Uh, so I think ask quad code questions about the code base and just don't code yet. And then once you feel comfortable with using quad code this way and you get comfortable with this idea of an agent that's doing this research for you, then start to use it to code. I think the second thing is when you are using quad code to write code, think about what kind of work do you want to do and like how big is the task. So for something that's really easy, I, I kind of kind of in my mind, I have these three categories, easy, medium, and hard, very roughly. And so easy tasks are something that Claude can write in one shot. Like one prompt, it'll get it pretty much right. Mm. And nowadays, I'll just go to GitHub and I'll tag at Claude on an issue and just have Claude write the PR for me. And this is how I do easy tasks because that frees up my terminal. I don't have to kind of spend it on this. Medium tasks, I'll start in the terminal and I'll start in plan mode. 
So just shift tab into plan and I'll align on a plan with Claude first. And then once I feel good about the plan, I'll go into auto accept and I'll have it implemented. And then for really hard tasks, I'm still the one driving and Quad is more of a tool. And I'm kind of pairing with it, but really I'm the one in the driver's seat, not Quad for this. Um, and so I'll use Quad maybe to do some code base research, uh, maybe prototype a few ideas. Maybe I'll just like vibe code a few options and to understand the boundaries of the system and what works well. But I'll still mostly implement it myself. And maybe Quad will write the unit tests, um, but it's still mostly me doing the coding. So I think that'll be the second advice is just think about what's the task that you're doing and what's the right way to use Quad code to do it. Mm -hmm. Those are great tips. Uh, and so as you can see, he was saying that developers really aren't going anywhere. He's on the edge of what AI is capable of right now. And he's still saying that I still have to write the code myself a lot of the time, especially if it's a high complexity task. I can't just trust the AI to finish the task for me. This has been my personal experience. I think that developers aren't going anywhere. I kind of think that any fear that developers are just, they're almost gone. They're, they're almost out of here. There's not going to be any dev jobs. I think it's unwarranted fear. You, sh you heard it from uh, the creator of Claude code himself. He's not worried about developers going anywhere. Uh, I think it was the founder of NVIDIA recently said that you shouldn't learn how to code. We should just get AI to code for us. I think that is some of the worst advice you could follow. I do think you need to learn how to code if you wanted to be a developer. I think it's still a great career choice. I actually now am more convinced that it's a great career choice than ever before. I was a little scared with all the AI advancement that maybe AI is going to replace us pretty soon. But I really, I honestly think, I've made some videos about this recently, but I really think we may have hit kind of another wall with AI advancement to where the, the reasoning models are amazing. They'll get incrementally better from now on, but they're just not ready to de replace developers completely. You still need developers. You can't just tell AI to build something complicated and then it goes off and builds it. You need additional tools to kind of direct it. And that's kind of what we're doing at fingochat.ai. If you go to fingochat.ai, you can sign up for free. It takes you to a page like this. I highly suggest you download the desktop app. That will take you to something like this. The reason is with the desktop app in the context engineering section called the train of thought, if you have the desktop app, you can connect a file tree so the AI can know the structure of your project. You can also connect files in your project that you select yourself. So it's a little different than like Claude code where you kind of trust the AI to just know what uh, files are relevant to your current task. Fingochat.ai is a little bit more hands-on. You actually pre-select the files that you want the AI to know ahead of time just to make sure that it knows the relevant files to what you're currently working on. And so we've spent a lot of time turning fingochat.ai into a really simple to use tool, but not a replacement. We don't really think that AI is going to replace developers, but you can finish 20 times more as a developer with these tools that we've built on top of AI than you could without the tools. Again, if you want to try that out for free, you can go to fingochat.ai. And my point in showing you that video is to show that developers aren't going anywhere. Yes, developers can finish 20 times more if you use tools like bingochat.ai. But again, there's still a lot to build out there. Even if every developer could finish 20 times more, there's still more than enough for developers to do. It's still a good career choice. And the truth is a lot of developers just aren't going to use AI. They're still surprisingly, I come across developers who don't use AI. I'm like, I saw a post on LinkedIn once where they're like, I just walked by a developer and he was writing code by hand without AI, like a crazy person. Like I, that's how I feel at this point. I'm like, I do not know how you can last in today's world without using AI to help you write code faster, better. Um, I just, again, I can finish 20 times more code with fingochat.ai than I could without it. I just can't imagine working without it now. It's become such an essential part of my uh, workflow. But anyway, let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you think 
developer jobs are safe? Or do you think eventually there is going to be enough tools to where developer jobs are just going to be replaced? Or do you agree with me and the cloud code creator that developer jobs aren't going anywhere? You still should learn how to code. It's still a good career choice. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and click the like button. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.